Goes for the bait. Gotta find some way to get him to talk about the Marble Street apartment. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get Bitropin. Without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for Betropin, my dear. Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? The important thing is that we're here, right? Do you have many clients? A few. I help to ease their anxiety. Get my hands been off, thin enough, hard working enough. I reassure those who find the system too difficult. I'm like a safety valve that keeps society from imploding. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around... Marble Street? You're not drinking? Yeah, sure I am. Having some trouble? Didn't your mother ever warn you about accepting gifts from strangers? <laughs> He claimed he had come to the census. Another one of those goddamn government spies. So, you're interested in my Marble Street apartment. I rent it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> To be honest, I don't give a damn, just as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. But enough with the chit-chat. I miss surgery, you see, so I take every opportunity to practice. I don't have any instruments here, so I use whatever comes to hand. I hope you won't hold that against me. Oh, God. Is that stinger? <laughs> Have you ever noticed? As soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling. 
I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Don't move. I won't be long. Feeling sick, got the sweats, hands are shaking. Hope this works out all right. Tuba trip to camp. Got it in my pocket. Got them rain. Soaking wet. 24 hours. I've got less than 24 hours if I want to find Sean Mars still alive. Mad Jack is suspected of stealing the car I'm looking for. Might be worth asking him a few questions. Blake wasn't in the office when I left. Don't think I'm gonna miss him. Jeez, won't this rain ever let up? I won't be coming here on vacation, that's for goddamn sure. Mad Jack, aka Jackson Neville, 
This guy's got a criminal record as long as my arm. Better be careful. The scrapyard. Good a place as any to tinker with stolen cars. Better have a word with the guy on the bulldozer. This is one fucked up sort of place. I'll question Neville and get the hell out of here. Can you stop that thing? Nam and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? I'm listening. Can we go inside? I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, or whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from me. Sorry, ma'am. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory for names. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. You trying to scare me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. I don't trust this guy. Not much help, this so-called Mad Jack. He's either clean as a whistle, or else he's got something to hide. The blue Chevrolet is my only lead. Better have a look with Ari. You never know. Traces of blue paint. The same tire tracks, traces of blue paint. Killer's car definitely came through here. Ari, comment. Traces of orchid pollen in the air inside the garage. Fingerprints. Probably Mad Jack's. Hmm, not the car I'm looking for. Size 10, most likely a visitor. Blood. Now why is there blood here?
the blood tracks lead to the acid bath. on your head, pig. I ain't got time to be playing around with you. Let's just get you out of sight and finish you off. around. Now you're gonna tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. I've no time to lose, Jack. I want to know who that car belongs to. Well, what you want don't mean shit to me. I ain't no snitch. You better just lock me up now, boy. Uh, broke my fucking nose, pig! Next, I'm gonna blow a hole in your face. Spill all of it. You don't scare me, Mr. CSI. You ain't got it in you. Last chance, Jack. Make it easy on yourself. What you gonna do? You ain't got them killer eyes, so what? You gonna cuff me? Do you like fireworks, Jack? Cause I bet them gas tanks are gonna blow up real nice. Shit, man, don't mess with the gasoline. Well, just say it was an accident. Or rather, I'll say it was an accident cause you won't really be able to talk, will ya, Jack? You what crazy motherfucker, you out of your mind, man! No, I don't know nothing about the guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car, get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash, and I ain't the questioning kind. Said I was supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. We'll continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything... Shit, not now. Anything you say can and will be... Hey, <laughs> you look like you got a problem, man. They letting you dope heads in the FBI now? God bless America. <clears throat> now I'm gonna give you a little help with your drug problem, Mr. Five-O. Permanently.
What you got? <laughs> oh. So, you think the origami killer killed Manfred? That makes sense. Didn't want him spilling his guts to us. And you suspect Gordy Kramer, right? Oh, him or one of his men. Gordy has the time and the means, not to mention the fucked up attitude to go along with it. He's only a suspect, but he's a pretty guilty looking one. Are these your files on the case? Yeah, I've been working on them for a couple of years. Uh, I built up a mountain of paperwork. Magazines about origami? You think the killer could have subscribed to one of those? If he was even remotely interested in origami in the last 30 years, his name may be in there somewhere. Trouble is, there's over 500 names. I guess a squat. I'm starving. Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'm no chef, but I should be able to make some scrambled eggs if you like. Great. I'm soaking wet. I need to warm up a little. Is it okay if I take a shower? I'll be my guest. Go to my bedroom. It's the next door. Oh, I'll cook up the eggs while you're under the shower. Some nerve, that girl. <laughs> Some nerve. Nobody didn't leave any prints in Manfred's shop. The last thing I need is to have to start explaining things to the cops. <sighs> Poor Manfred. We'd just been toast in the old days. Didn't bring him much luck.
I should be ready by now. I took the liberty of borrowing your bathrobe. Looks better on you. What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for royal machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients one by one that's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list. The list of subscribers to Origami magazines. You still got that, right? Yeah, yeah. I've got, well, Lauren, wait. If the killer really used a royal typewriter, and if he subscribed to an origami magazine, his name should be on both lists. Well, Lauren, uh, I mean, that's just an assumption, but yeah, I suppose. His name is here somewhere. Help me, we're gonna find him. The only guy whose name was on both lists died when he was 10. What are you gonna do now? Dig up his coffin, make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't make any sense. Unless the killer was only using his name. But why use the name of a kid who died 30 years ago? Well, that's what we came to find out. The name is John Shepard. It should be on a grave around here somewhere. You never give up, do you? It's cold, it's raining, I'm standing outside getting soaked. Oh, how I love my job. She's convinced she's onto something. And here's me, thinking we're wasting our friggin' time in this friggin' cemetery. I hate cemeteries. They depress the hell out of me. I should be investigating Gordy Kramer right about now. And here I am, standing in a cemetery, pouring rain, looking for the grave of a kid who's been dead for 30 years. Gotta hand it to her. That girl is one really determined chick. 